somebody. It's a Friday night, which is a little bit different for us. Generally speaking, we try for Thursday nights. And Athena was here yesterday because I was going to. But honestly, this quilt did not end up being harder, but there was actually a lot more to it than I wanted that I wanted to show you. So, for instance, originally I was just going to oops, I'm sorry, I have to turn this down. OK, I wanted to just show you how to piece these little dogs because they're so cute. And Athena mentioned that he looks like the Max from The Secret Life of Pets, which I don't know who he looks like, but I got it from this pattern. So this pattern is called Mod Dog. The company is Color Works, and that's w color C-O-L-O-U-R. W-E-R-X. Now, the color to me sounds French or Canadian or something. I don't know how they learned to spell works, but it works. And that is their website, too. So I did not get a chance to talk to Laura at Fireside Quilts about getting these in. So she doesn't have these at the Fireside Quilts like I normally have her have the stuff. So you want to go to www.colorworks.com. And I'll put that in the comments when we're all done. All right. So it's a pattern that I bought four years ago because it was just so cute. How could I not? And it had dogs on it. And I love dogs. And I know lots of people that love dogs. So I knew at some point that I would make it. So I decided it was time that I was going to make it because it's Christmas time. And I think that there's somebody that I could make this for for Christmas, which leads me to, okay, I don't normally do this, but I have a joke for you. It was on my radio station today. Athena's giving me the look like, okay, seriously? All right. So where, how much does Santa Claus have to pay to park his sleigh? Answers? Answers? Anybody? Anybody answering? I have no idea. Nothing. It's on the house. Well, okay, Athena's. Well, yeah. So I guess I'm not going to be a comedian when I grow up. I thought it was kind of cute. Keep your day so. <laughs> So Merry Christmas. Christmas is coming and I've got a few days to get this done um, as a Christmas gift. And I just think it's really fun. So what I want to show you is how to piece this dog. And then I came up with some other ideas. Now in the pattern, I want you to know that they're asking you to use a fusible webbing to do this. Totally fine. Go ahead and do that. If you want to give that a try, there should be no problems. For me, I was just thinking that, so if you come down here, this was my little sample piece, which was kind of fun too, because you know, I never do a little sample piece. I know a lot of people that before they start a quilt, they'll do like a little mini version of it. But I thought I should know if it's going to work before I actually go ahead and show you guys how to do it and make the whole quilt. And so it did work. So the idea is I'm going to piece on a cut away stabilizer. So this could be a tear away also, but this one is a cut away. And this is what you would use if you're doing embroidery and maybe on the back of a sweatshirt. And you know how it gets softer every time you wash that sweatshirt. So I gave it a try. I did the technique. I put it on this little sample quilt. I quilted it and I washed it and it washed beautifully. It's really, it's slightly stiff. It is not as stiff as if I had used steam a seam light. And my thinking there was that it's such a big piece, whereas usually if I'm using steam a seam light, it's for a flower or, you know, something like that. Not this whole big guy. I just thought it would make it a little bit stiff. So now I want to stand up and show you the quilt as he's coming together. So, okay. There. Can you see it? What can you see, Athena? I can see Okay, three of the dogs, and then look at this background fabric, too, because I want to talk about that a little bit. Now, I've got portions of this quilted, but I want to show you some of the quilting process, too, because I'm going to use what I call Apla quilting. I, I don't know if it's got a real name or not. Um, I also am not seeing anybody chat, so I'm not sure why, but we might not be having chats on. Gail said they are so cute. Oh, okay. All right, there we are. Okay, thank you, Gail. Somebody's out there. So I want to show you the technique called Apple quilting also. So let's get started. So let's move. Oh, that was on an iron. Okay, I've got my little mini iron here and don't ever think that baby doesn't get hot. All right, so to start with, I decided to just do one color dog because this one had some, I mean, it's really adorable, all these really colorful dogs, which I absolutely love. 
the reason I chose one color, not that I don't have enough fabrics to do like 99 of all of these different dogs, but I had cut my sample, my strips of blue. I had so many of them that I already had enough to do 29 blue dogs. And I thought, all right, I'm just, you know how you just go overboard, you pull out your little fabrics and you cut this strip and you cut this strip. And next thing you know, you've got like enough strips to do way too many. So I thought, you know, blue dogs are nice. I'm going to just have blue dogs. So you want to cut your strips 11 inches tall to start with. And if we look at one of these, this is the design. I chose 11 inches because 11 inches would be as tall as the dog is. So I would know that all of my pieces would be long enough to work for the dog. But then I'm going to show you a different technique that maybe you don't have to have them all be there. So I've got my strips. I'm going to set them over here because we'll be starting to do our sewing over there. Okay. Then we're going to come to our pattern. We're going to use the cutaway stabilizer. As I mentioned, you're going to take your stabilizer, put it on top of the pattern. And I chose to use a simple Sharpie marker to do the drawing. It is permanent. Hi, Kathleen. Hi, Robin. Hi, Trixie. <laughs> I don't know what your name is, Trixie, so I'm going to okay. go with hi. Debbie and Joyce. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this Friday night. I'm sure you've got nothing better to do. Um, if it were not, you know, coronavirus time, maybe we'd all be out on dates, but we're just not. So I'm using just a Sharpie marky, marker to do the tracing around. I did not trace the collar, and I'll explain why later. I also, at this point, I did trace the eye, but that's on a separate piece. But you see his little ear here? You want to trace the ear a little bit separate. So I have him. Let's move the pattern now. Will I be able to find anything when I'm done? I don't know. So it's all traced down, and I put the ear just a little bit separate. Now it's time to do the sewing. So let's go. Oh, before we move, I want you to know that I have my Clover mini iron here. It is a hot little guy. Um, yeah, right here. I've got my little wool mat, the half inch wool mat. And I just want to remind you how hot these guys are. So when I get going here and we get everything set up, um, I was just throwing things down, getting everything ready. And sure enough, one of my brand new Omni Grid mats was touching it. And so now I have a a very sad, sad burn. That's I guess sad. better it than, you know, other things. So moving OmniGrid over there. Actually, I'm going to need to pick up my OmniGrid because now is when we're going to use it. So, all right. So I'm going to take this template over to my sewing machine. And I want you to see something different here, too. I have put my FAF icon in the normal table that I would normally have my grand quilter. This is normally the table that I use for doing the machine quilting on, and I am, but I wanted to do the piecing and the machine quilting all in one place. So I took my icon and I tucked it down inside the little hole where my grand quilter normally is. It worked out pretty good because it's pretty darn level here so I can do free motion quilting, but it's got like this empty space, but it works. It really does work. And for what we're going to do today, it was really nice because how quickly I can change threads and everything on this machine too. So starting out with, I'm going to use, here's my little dog template, and I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. I'm going to start here. I'll take those scissors. Thank you. I'm going to start with the way that they would kind of explain it. Keeping in mind, you can have the dogs facing this way to the right or to the left just by flipping it over. So I'm just going to go to the left just so you know I can. I'm going to start with using my 11 inch strips. So here is one strip and it is as tall as the dog. Actually, it's a little bit short, but it'll work. It goes from his foot. You can see his foot all the way to the top of his tail. Then I'm gonna grab another piece and I'm gonna put that right sides together. Okay. Now these strips are pretty straight. I've got no problem with how straight those are. I'm gonna use a couple of pins here and there. And you don't have to, as I got going, I didn't use as many pins as I did in the beginning. I've got my machine set up at no seam allowance. It's just my regular foot, my regular, um, don't need to move it over because this is stitch and flip. You don't have to worry about scant quarter inch kind of stuff when you're doing this kind of work. So now I'm just gonna start sewing right up here at the top. And because that piece was cut very, very straight, 
I don't need to do anything else. I'm going to show you what I mean by when I say that. Now from here, we're going to back up and go to the ironing board because that's where my Clover Mini Iron is because I want to press this out. Now you can do finger pressing. Um, it works okay, but every once in a while you would want to go and give it a pressing with your um, larger iron. I don't like finger pressing, and this is going to sound really selfish and What's that word that means that all you do is think about yourself? Conceited. You'll get conceited. It messes up my manicure, people. It kind of, I hate that. So I don't like finger pressing. Okay, so going back to the sewing, I'm going to grab another piece. Now this time I'm going to turn this around. So I'll be working this way. I'm going to grab another piece, just any color, any color at all. And when I place this, I am not always just going to place it on the edge. I'm going to place it kitty wampus. I want there to be variety in the direction that these are going. So now I'm going again. Now in the pattern, let's go to the ironing board. In the pattern, what they have you do is first create these panels of strips just like I'm doing, but with no stabilizer underneath. They just say, just piece strips together. And then they put the fusible, um, fusible web on the back of it. I just thought that this would be easier. And I'm really glad I did because I really think it worked out well. Now, could you right here, because you saw me just trim away that extra blue. I could, if I wanted to be very particular, use my add a quarter ruler here, like when I do paper piecing. It's just not necessary, but if you want to, you're more than welcome to do that, all right? So now we're gonna press this out. And I would continue all the way across the board. So I'm gonna skip this little guy because I have a couple of other ones started. So that's what this one would look like. So I've got, would just be just a few more to go on him. So you see that he is all pieced out, except his nose. After you would get that done, then from this side with this technique, you would do a line of stitching here outlining him. So we're going to do that too, but I want to show you what I did instead. Instead of using all of the 11 inch strips and then cutting away, like I'm not sure if you can see, but the line of the dog is right here. And so I'd be cutting away all of this part, cutting away. A lot of the back part here, if you see where just the line is, you can see all this excess. What I did instead, and this is the one that will continue, is I just used pieces that covered. So I did not you have to use a whole 11 inch strip. Now, of course, when I'm using from his tail to his foot, I do, but look at here on these sections here. This is his ear and his nose. I didn't need a full piece on his body. I didn't need a full piece. Now, it could get you in trouble if you were not paying attention to your placement. So the easier way to do it, to the non-thinking, I don't have to think too hard method, would be this method. Cover that with 11 inch strips. No thinking required. If you want to save a little bit of fabric, try it this way. So let's go to the machine and th finish this guy up. So now I'm going to use some different size strips maybe not so long, maybe long. Nope, not that one. I want to use a shorter one so you can see. And the pile of strips, oh my goodness. Yeah. All right, so right from here, and I'm going to make, of course, this go kitty wampus. Now, sometimes, and of course, it's not happening now because I want to show you what would. Sometimes, maybe your strips are not perfectly straight because when I cut off just, you know, strips, I'm not paying real close attention to the lining up of the horizontal and all that. I am just chopping me some strips. So sometimes you might want to take your ruler. Let's say this edge wasn't straight and I'm going to make it just a little kitty wampus just to show you the way and draw a line. So then I know I have a straight line because what is of utmost importance is that you are sewing on a straight line. That's the thing that you need to keep in mind. Now, whether or not you're sewing on a straight line because your strip is straight, or if you're gonna sew on a straight line because you drew it, either way, you need to have a straight line that you're sewing on if you think that these little guys are going to then come and flip out the way that they should. 
That sounded funny. They're flipping out the way they should. All right, back to the cutting and pressing. And this is a very nice setup. If you're kind of, I don't know if you kind of noticed how Athena, how close she is to where I am. Um, consider setting your sewing system up this way. You just turn around, you do the pressing, you go back the other way, you're cutting. Really works well. Right. Dwarf not included. Dwarf not included. <laughs> All right. Athena is a dwarf, so she's not picking on anybody but herself. Just FYI. That's why we have such the perfect camera angle. All right, so that is all pressed. Hello, more people are here. Hi, Carmen. Hi, Leticia. Leticia. Leticia, I think I said that right. I'm so proud of myself. And Franabelle. Franabelle, is that really your name or is that just your call? Because Franabelle, that's an interesting name. I like it. From Wisconsin. All right, going back to sewing. Now I'm going to use a longer strip because I'm here at his tail section. I'm sure there's a song about that somewhere. Or is that a there's a bird's got a tail section. Okay. So this time, because it's going to flip over into his leg, I'm going to take this strip a little farther down up here on his tail. I think that should probably catch all of his tail. So like I said, if you don't want to have to think about placement too much, just use the 11 inch strips. Then you don't have to think about it. You're just going to cover the whole thing and cut them out later. Oops. Cut. There we go. Back to pressing. This is a workout for Athena. Hi. New York City. I heard you guys got snow in New York City. We've had like maybe a little bit of flurries in Michigan, although I do think like Minnesota and Wisconsin got some. The upper parts of Michigan got some, but we were not fortunate enough, which I think is very sad. Hello, Virginia. Oh, Southern, Southern Maryland. Is that, is that DC? Is that DC? Would that be D.C. if it's Southern, Southern Maryland? Yeah. yeah. I actually had never been to the East Coast. Well, like D.C., but not like all the way to the ocean until just this summer in Rhode Island. That was cool. All right. Just one more strip, I think, will do it. And then we'll be able to move on. So I'm going to use not such a long strip this time because I only have his one leg to fill. So you can, I hope you can understand how quick this can go and how creative you can be with it. Not only when you're doing the strips like this, but after doing this project, I came up with the idea that I should do a whole bunch more. Oh, 65 miles south of DC, Australia. Okay, she's loving the blue dog. Okay, um, Australia, hi. Australia. Um, we love you. We love you. <laughs> okay, that was funny. Sorry. Okay, so after I did the dog, I decided I could do more than just a dog. I did a cat. I mean, is he the cutest thing ever? He, he's so adorable. I love that I used, I know I'm saying I love something that I did, which I'm happy that I came, became creative. Okay. I love that I used the skinnier strips. So this would be like a, maybe a gold tiger cat. Is he not the cutest thing? And I am going to put him on this quilt and I'll hopefully remember to show you where, but I got to thinking, what other things could I do? I could do flowers. Uh, th this one doesn't show. I could do, I could do a wiener dog. I'd blow him up a little bit, maybe. A bunny rabbit. Cars. Leaves. Alphabet. Okay, that's upside down. I could do this on the alphabet and put that whole thing on. This is, oh, that's, I think that's an elephant. There's a better one. How about dinosaurs? I could do anything that I could get a silhouette for, I could do with this technique and have these be really creative. There's another elephant, I like him. On a quilt, the bunny rabbit, look at this one, the snake. All of these ones that I am showing you, these are silhouettes that I literally just printed out at maybe 5.30 right off of the electric quilt program, which is the one that's a ducky, rubber ducky, you're the one. So rubber ducky, a whale. I printed these off of Electric Quilt at 5.30. These are all silhouettes and designs that were already in there. I thought that was a pretty cool looking dog. It's more like a Labrador. Um, another kitty cat. So just keep that in mind that all you need is a silhouette. Now the original cat that I first showed you, I actually found on the internet. I just looked for line drawings of a cat 
and it print, I just made it bigger, and this is what I had. So think about all the different designs you could do this fun stitch and flip with. So now we have him. The entire dog, if we look at his backside, is all drawn out. The next step, I feel like there's a thread down there, okay, is to trace around the dog. So I'm going to sew around the dog, and I'm going to make my stitch smaller. So I want it to be a very, so I'm going 1.5. I want it to be a very close stitch because I want it to actually hold the fibers together when I'm cutting this. My thinking there, and I think it worked when I looked at my little sample piece, was that when it was washed, if I had these fine stitches going around holding this all in place, that they would actually keep help to keep the piece from fraying when I washed it. Did it fray a little bit? Yep, it did. Does that bother me? Nope, it doesn't. Not in any way, shape, or form. If it does a little bit of fraying, that is going to be just fine. If I had done this with a fusible webbing, over time it would have done a little bit of fraying. So either way, it's going to happen. And when I do the quilting, I'll show you how it is that I'm able to do some more stitching to help it not do any more fraying. So here you see I'm going to go all the way around and we've gone around enough for you to get the idea for the next step. So now going to Texas. Is it kind of warm down there? I know it's a great idea, Mel. That's what I was thinking. So now using a very sharp pair of scissors. So this is my Omni Grid scissors. Love these things. They're actually made by Kai which is a company in Japan. Before I had these, I have a pair of professional Kais that cost about 90 bucks. Love them. They have like metal handle goes all the way up. These ones are under 30 bucks. Really, really nice pair of scissors. Um, and they're made by Kai, so I know that they're good. These babies cut so smoothly. So the idea, and this is why I also wanted to use the Sharpie marker, although I went off the line there, not don't think that that dog minds that his butt's a little bit bigger than his neighbor. I'm trimming outside the edge of the stitching line. So let's see if you can see that. Yep, you can. Actually, that worked out really well there where I missed it. And some of the seams are kind of heavy because you saw where it was folding over. So going over like three layers of fabric and going all the way around and then all the way up and around his tail. So you get the idea. So we actually trim out. I'm going to turn this off so it'll stop being so hot. All right, now I'm going to go back to finding the one that I cut out. No, I think that you get the idea. All right, so let me move these here. So let's move this out of the way, that out of the way, and let's go to the design. All right, so looking at the quilt here, with the design, remember how I said that you want them maybe facing in opposite directions? So you see that the one dog is to the right and the one dog is to the left. And this is the layout that they have in the pattern. So follow her layout. I do want to talk to you a little bit about the super fun stuff here. So they used all um, kind of newsprinty kind of fabrics. So fabrics that had, trying to find my samples, fabrics that, you know, had writing on them. And I just went through my stash and I just found black and white. So this one. I know Athena's trying to read that. What's yeah, yeah. that says? It says, um, yeah, let's not read it. Okay. <laughs> it, anyway, it was, it's supposed to be like, you know, for if you're looking for somebody in a newspaper and this one wants this person to be a professional dancer. So oh, I was reading the, okay. Oh, fun the one below female. it, fun time, female, 20 something world gymnast champion, four years running, seeking swim champion to make ultimate Olympic contender. Okay. So we're not looking for those. I used Instead of just newsprint, I just used a variety of gray and white and black and white type prints. Um, this one actually is really fun. So it's got lots and lots of words on it. It says, yes, I can. No way. Uh-huh. Mom says who? So anyway, so I love buying fabrics that have writing on them. Um, they're just fun. So when I was in the shop the other day, because I had used all of those I was in the shop. I shop at a Smith Owen Sewing Center up here in Grand Rapids. And so I found some to kind of replace. And in the process, look at that little cow. He's so cute. Little campers. And these are all brand new fabrics. Beer. This one. Oh, I never even showed Athena this one. She's going to love this. It's a cat toile. 
I do like it. There's a church one. Honey bears. <laughs> oh, this one's great. Monkeys with hearts. I did get some writing ones, but I want to show one last, well, two last ones because they're so cute. Cats on bikes. Mm -hmm. Cows. And then this one is snow globes. And there's Santa in his underwear. Because he's doing <laughs> Yep, he's so cute. All right, so back to work. Hi, Ireland. We have Ireland and England, too. What time is it there? Holy cow, is it time for you guys to go to bed? Because it's almost, well, okay, it's not time for us to go to bed. Okay, so you're going to piece this, which, whatever fabrics you choose. The center section is one larger section. I'm going to take out these pins. And we are ready to actually apply quilt down this dog. Now, after I apply quilt him, I already did this one. I will then add his collar and his eyeball. Um, but we're not going to do that now. We're going to just apply quilt this down. But to do that, I need to be on free motion. So now you are going to see one of the wonders of this sewing machine. It's almost midnight. It's almost midnight there. Okay. It's Friday. It's not a school night, so that's okay. I'm going to show you how quickly I can switch from piecing to free motion. I take off my walking foot. I pop off that foot. Here is my floating free motion foot. All right, back up a second. Going to come over here. Going to hit free motion, dynamic spring foot. I'm ready to free motion quilt. I don't know that there's another machine on the planet that you can change your machine over that quickly to free motion quilting. So for this apple quilting, I am going to run right near the edge that I had cut. So I am going slightly inside the cut edge. Oh, I forgot to show you one thing. To put these down, I used my Roxanne's basting glue. I just put dots of the Roxanne so you can see it's secure, very, very secure, but not all the way around the edges. That's okay. I don't need it all the way around the edges. I just put dots where I thought it would help. What was nice about that is when I realized that I had not actually spaced them evenly, I just popped off the glue. So if I did, whereas if I fused it, you really can't change it. So here I just popped off the glue. I'm like, all right, I'm going to put him somewhere else. And you can just pop it off like that. So love my Roxanne's basting glue. All right. So I'm going to continue my stitching around the sides, just near the edges. Now, I know that some of you are chatting. Thank you very much. But I want you to know that while I'm stitching, I, I can't see the chat. So I'll try to get back to all of you. So going all the way around him. Uh, Mel has a question. Yes, Mel. Did you take off the paper? No, left it right on. There it is. It's still on there because this is a cut. You, I don't think you were here at the very beginning, Mel. This is a cutaway stabilizer. This is what an embroiderer will use if they are going to embroider a design, let's say, on a sweatshirt. All right. Oops, here, I can't quite see behind me. So if they embroider it on a sweatshirt, then you know how that after you've washed it once or twice, it gets super duper soft. Well, that's what this will do. Get super duper soft. Okay, coming around the edge. My machine's not having a problem. I'm having a problem. I can't really see behind me right now. Oops, and my thread broke. You know what? It just kills me. I just jinxed it. <laughs> I did. Because I did this entire quilt, and I swear to you, I swear on a Bible, and if you know me, you know that that's very important. I did not have one single thread break the entire time I was working on this. But this lets me show you how easy it is to thread it. You saw me just sweep it down, and now I push that button, close my eyes, and ta-da, it's threaded. There. All right. Okay, we're on 30 minutes, I think, Athena's saying. All right. Got to get this apple quilted down. I might not be able to show you the rest of the quilting that I do on the um, whole quilt because I want to show you how I quilt this dog. I'm going to stop right there and show you how you quilt the dog. So my recommendation, I did it a couple different ways. I tried some swirls. I tried some different things. I really think I decided that just going up and down worked best. So I'm going to go just kind of up and down, controlling my speed with my hands. My machine can go slow, and I go slow, or my machine can go fast, and I go fast. So just doing it like this is going to stitch it down. A lot of nice quilting going on. All right, so I'm going to cut that and show you what I did on the other parts. 
my intention, I'm not going to show you this right now, but since I have all of those dogs there, my plan, where is he? So I'm going to take the kitty cat and I'm going to put the kitty cat over here like, you know, cat's rule, that kind of thing, because the cat would be leading the way. Okay, so that's where the kitty cat will go. Uh, Daisy has a real quick question. Yes, Daisy. Um, can you say what type of paper it is? Does it actually have a name? I would suspect it does not have a name because I bought a bulk roll quite a few years ago because I use it for a lot of different things. But I would suspect that a Pellon brand would be just fine. There are a lot of really nice brands out there. Um, Floriani, Inspira. Um, these are names for when you're doing a lot of fancy embroidery. This is not fancy embroidery. You just need this cutaway to hold on to those fabrics and it's going to do great. So I would recommend a simple brand like Pellon. A Pellon lightweight cutaway or tear away, could be either way, either one of them would work, stabilizer. So, and you can find that at any sewing machine shop, okay? In any sewing center, actually. Maybe even like a big box stores would have it. All right, so the quilting. For the quilting on this, I did just simple, big, maybe one inch meandering here in the white section because I couldn't see it anyway. And anytime I'm going to quilt something that I can't see the quilting anyhow, just do a simple meandering. Nobody's going to see it. Up here on the gray, though, I did swirls with points. Can you see that on the camera? All right. So, and you have seen me quilt swirls with points before in some of the other videos. So you can backtrack on some of the videos and see how I do that. Just don't, can't do this all day long. Well, actually I could, except Bill's making dinner. And then you can see here where I've got a ribbon that I have glued down for his little collar. I've not okay. stitched it down, but I thought he looked pretty fancy. And then they have just a simple eyeball up there. And I should have this quilted by tomorrow. So in the binding on after that, and then it'll be ready for Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you all for watching anything here. Cutaway or tearaway is what I was after. Oh yes, there we go. I answered the question then. Um, I think that's it. Hello, Vegas, Ireland. It's almost midnight. Time for you guys to go to bed. I hope I left these sugar plums dancing in your head so that you'll have really, really sweet dreams. Um, and that's about it. We have been posting on Mondays videos from my new book, which is The Sunset Over Dublin. It is an eight inch sampler. So I hope that you guys have been viewing that. Um, it's gotten some pretty good reviews. People really like it. And I'm really happy with the book because I literally did it all myself this time, which is quite a feat for me. I'm not real good with the whole graphics kind of thing. So learned a lot doing that. And I was very, very happy with the results. I don't think there's anything else I need to share. Have a Merry Christmas, although I think I will be seeing those of you that are part of the designer level. We will be having a session on the 23rd. Designer level is part of the membership. So if you click that join button, you can find out more about it. But if you're interested in learning about electric quilt designing, that's designer level. And we will be doing one of those sessions on the 23rd. So I hope to see all of my designer level and quilt addict level members there for that. And that's all. Have a great day and thanks for watching.